Alright guys, welcome back to Son of Scotland 90, bringing you some more Total Extreme Wrestling. This is episode 14. Unfortunately got some bad news, I've tried previously recording this and I just lost it. I don't know what happened to the content or the the save or whatever. I was, I just completed the explosion, I was about to run Impact Wrestling and the, the save file thing corrupted uh, from the actual screen recorder thing so Unfortunately, I can't do explosion live or record explosion because it's already happened. But you can see there, there's a recap of the show, and it was the best explosion we've done by quite a good margin. Actually, it was one of our better shows. Actually, right up there with the um, the TNA impacts. I'd love to get a 54 for a impact, but we managed to get it for explosion. As you can see, Tyrus basically called it Hardy, and a brawl ensued. Uh, ensued. Uh, Tyrus there maybe sent out by Ethan Carter the free because ever since Jeff Hardy persuaded Ethan Carter to give his brother one more shot at the title, Matt Hardy's been on a roll, and uh, looks like Matt Hardy could be taking the belt off EC3 at Turning Point. That awesome Kong defeating Velvet Sky with a best defeating Rockstar Spud. With an angle involving the beautiful, the beautiful people, Madison Rain defeated Gail Kim. An angle backstage with uh, Jeff Hardy before the match, which is 65 rating, fucking awesome. And then the main event with Jeff Hardy defeating Tyra. So I'm positive that it got a great rating just basically thanks to Jeff Hardy. But you know what? Maybe it's going to start using a couple of bigger guys on uh, Explosion more often to try and get it up there because the ratings for Explosion have been terrible. So hopefully, if we keep uh, putting big stars on the show, then we'll get the good ratings. Obviously, I'm not going to be putting, I'm not going to be booking it like an impact, but I don't see no reason why I can't have one or two big stars or one big feud happening on a explosion, as long as it's not nothing major. And I thought, considering since Tyrus is more like a bodyguard, it's not really, having that in explosion wouldn't really hurt the main feud. So that's the reason why Jeff Hardy defeated Tyrus in the main event. So unfortunately, we didn't get the... Just a wee check, I'm going to check something here, see what that actually rated. Yeah, there you can see actually that explosion was our third best show. Um, uh, higher than a lot of our impacts. So, we definitely need to try and do it, improve again. As you can see, there's the, there was our first and only pay per view, 41D, fucking terrible, terrible rating behind explosions, behind impacts. So, turning point this weekend, we're definitely going to have to improve so this is the last impact wrestling going into turning point hopefully we can um, deliver a good show i've already booked it let's run the show so we kick off impact with mr anderson's uh his in-ring his uh, talk show answer the asshole mr anderson hosts his interview segment with his guest jeff hardy and this gets a 64c Awesome rating to start the show. Mr. Anderson worked the crowd well, using the freedom to improvise to his advantage. So last week, Anderson had Matt Hardy on his show. And this week, it was Jeff Hardy. Basically, just asking Jeff Hardy what he feels his, uh, his brother's chances are against Ethan Carter the third. And, um, yeah, just basic talk show. 64C start, start the night. Sorry guys, 64 C start tonight, uh, you know, I can't complain with that, Jeff Hardy is developing better performance skills, so uh, great way to start the show, we need more of that answer the asshole, it's definitely a talk show segment that is going to be staying, I can tell you that, especially if it keeps delivering these good ratings. The first match of the night, and a match that had average crowd reaction but featured terrible wrestling, oh no, Homicide defeated Crazy Steve in 8 minutes 1 with the cop killer, Crazy Steve ain't no cop. But uh, he's been put down by the cop killer and announcing quality in the commentary left at the match. Nobody improved and it got 41D. To be honest, that's not too bad. I'd have took that if you offered me that before the match started. And uh, about that soldering action, but not much we have heat. Michael Bennett defeated Rockstar Spud in 8 minutes 2 seconds by pinfall with a pile driver. 36D minus. Maria Canelli did some good work at ringside. And again, the announcing in com colour commentary helped the match. Nobody improved. 36D minus. Uh, I'll do, I'll do, it's not the best, like, but I'll take what you can get, I'll do for now. Gail Kong and Aus Gail Kong, what the fuck, Gail Kim and Austin Kong called it Velvet Sky and Madison Rain, they accepted 
This is versus Stone and it's got fair ID basically. They called them out for a match at the pay per view. And um, the beautiful people accepted, and Gail Kim and Kong then put the stipulation across that the losing team will have to disband and they can never team again. So, who's going to be losing? Is it going to be the beautiful people or is it going to be Kong and Gail Kim? I'll just add this in here, just to, I don't know, in case we need to go back and check it. Uh, losing team has to disband. So yeah, I just thought I'd add some new. This this uh, feud has been it's been uh, dragging on for quite a long time now. So not a lot you can do if <laughs> you keep going over the same shit. This feud will be ending this Sunday this Sunday at Turning Point Thirty Eight D minus. Moving on next, and a match that uh, average crowd reaction, some decent in ring action. Manic defeated Mandrews in eight minutes twenty six by pinfall for Frog Splash, and again announcing color commentary. Helped the match out, nobody improved, 42D. You know, since it's been downhill since that talk show, to be honest, but I've got a couple of big matches lined up for tonight, so hopefully they can pull us out the shit, guys, and give us that rating that we need. Up next, Dixie Carter books a tag team match that we'll see Bram and Kurt Angle against. Again, it's not just them, actually. I don't know what the fuck this is. She badly messed that up. So it's a beer money. If yeah, so basically Dixie Carter deciding to reward Bram and Angle because she was impressed that you know, after coming to that agreement, they can have no contact, no physical contact between each other before the pay-per-view. And last week, they abided by that. So Dixie Carter is rewarding them. She's putting them in a team again tonight. And she says if they can defeat the tag champs and the number one contenders for the tag titles, beer money, in a three-way tag team match tonight, then Angle and Bram will be added to the tag match at turning point. And um, here you can see Kurt Angle's storyline has uh, advanced in the tag title storyline. Has advanced, it's got a 47D, which I'll do, it's not too bad. Moving on, in the ring, Tigre, Uno and Manic are having a contract signing for the upcoming match. With Jeremy Borash Services hosting the contract signing segment, Tigre, Uno signs contract first, we'll hand it over to Manic. He then jots his name down, making the match official. Um, that's it really, just a contract signing. x defense title match happening this Sunday at Turning Point. Manic is learning to show charisma, which is good for him. 36D minus, which is not good for me because it's not a good rating. Uh, moving on. Went in the angle backstage with beer money, and that's got a 60C rating. That's what I like to see. Beer money getting a 60C rating. And um, we needed that to try and up the <laughs> show's not been that great, so thanks, beer money. Which leads into the match and about that had good crowd and good action. Bram and Kurt Angle defeated Beer Money and the Wolves in 14 minutes 44 seconds when Kurt Angle defeated David Richard by submission with an ankle lock. And this got a 62C. Very good match. Uh, one of the best matches we've had, I'd say, probably up is definitely, I think, a top five in terms of rating since we've started this uh, series. Bobby Roode and James Storm showed excellent chemistry, as did the Wolves. The retiring Kurt Angle storyline has its fans of this segment. And the tag title storyline has also transferred segments. So it looks as if we're going to the turning point that Bram and Kurt Angle will be competing twice in the one night. So we'll see what happens. Up next, uh, we had Michael Bennett attack Drew Galloway. For no specific reason, screw Drew Galloway really just set to host this Galloway to Glory uh, challenge competition match, whatever you want to call it. This week, but it doesn't happen because uh, Michael Bennett attacks him from behind. That's got a 24E rating, and this is a this has really brought the shit down, man. Terrible rating. Moving on, in an extremely poor match. Brooke defeated Jade by eight minutes and eight minutes 18 by a pinfall with a test shocker. The announcing quality and color commentary helped the match. The knockout supremacy storm has advanced with a segment by 21E minus. It's uh, going downhill here. Jade's improving in flying skills, which is good, but that rating's certainly not good. Don't know why it's so bad, actually. 
and uh, moving on to tonight's main event and about that good crowd and good action Lashley and the Hardys defeated Eric Young EC3 and Tyrus in 13 minutes 17 seconds when Matt Hardy defeated Eric Young by pinfall with a twist of fate so Matt Hardy once again getting another victory no one can stop Matt Hardy at the moment he just will not die 59C rating, very good for the main event. The I Will Not Die storyline has advanced and the Crazy Man targets Lashley storyline, which is basically just a feud between Lashley and uh, Eric Young, has also advanced and that got a 59C rating. Happy with that to end the show. Lovely stuff. Let's see what the show now gets overall. There were some good matches. There was that good answer the asshole talk show, but there was a lot of crap that's probably going to drag this down. And if we can go over something, if we can get like a 52 or 53 show, I'll be happy. Let's see what we get. 50 feet, 54 C minus. Um, we got the same rating as uh, Explosion. And you know what, guys, I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah, I mean, there was with a 62, a 60, a 59, and a 64, which is um, very good, but there was a lot of poor shit. Especially the, the Michael Bennett attacking Drew Galloway and Brooke defeating Jade. After coming off that 62 rated uh, freeway tag match to go down to a 24 and a 21, it's just unacceptable really. Before the main event lifting us back up to a 59. Even the, t even the, uh, the segments 10 and 11, even if we could have got like both 40s for them, you know the final rating of this show could have been could have been high 50s, you no, know, it could have been a lot closer to the 60. But sadly, we couldn't. But, like I said, 54C minus. Not too bad. Definitely take that. So, let's move on now. All the storylines now are set for turning point. You can see quickly, just before the end of the episode, we've actually got a 0 point. 3-5 rating on Pop TV. Uh, so yeah, Friday at prime time on Fight Network got us a 10, 0 0.10 rating, which is down from the previous shows. That's a point and stuff there for Explosion. Yeah, the shows didn't even rate on, uh, on these ones. In the last show, got us a 0 0.1 rating, so once again, failing to move up there but yeah that's going to do it we've got turning point tomorrow night should be a good show should be a lot better than the last paper few we hosted but before then it's going to be an episode a ring of honor guys so again thanks for watching i'm feeling a bit under the weather so if i'm talking funny and if i'm not making much sense that will be the reason why like i said guys this has been sort of scotland 90 this has been the tna slash ring of honor 2 series and um, I'll catch you guys later, so until next time, peace.